So, who wants to start? So, I reckon you should start that because you've been here from the beginning. Okay then. So, hi, I'm Alexandra Bolton. I'm the Executive Director for the Centre of Digital Wheel Britain. I've been here right from the beginning, from September 2017, and I get to see us out till March 22 as well. And I first became involved in uh, July of 2018 uh, through the National Digital Twin Programme. Uh, and then subsequently I've become the uh, director of CWB, uh, but that's just a year, so I'm the newbie. Why was CDBB created? Well, there was a real need. Uh, I'm, before CDBB, there was some great work had, had been done uh, within government with the BIM task force, uh, starting to uh, put together a, a vision for digital built Britain. Uh, but really that needed to come into being, uh, and that's what CDBB was all about. So in 2017, in the autumn, um, a partnership between Bayes and the University of Cambridge was created that is the centre of digital built Britain. And that was the, the focus, the home for the Digital Built Vision programme. I think at its heart, it's really all about digitalisation of the built environment. And that's really about uh, through life cycle information management, you know, unlocking the value of that uh, to benefit people, uh, society and nature. And that's reflected in the words that we've chosen to describe it. So we talk about design, build, operate, integrate, or all stages of a building or an asset's existence. We need to be thinking about data and how we share it and how we make better decisions. So what became clear as we started this journey was that there were groups across industry, academia and policy working in this field and our role was to bring them together, to connect and coordinate and to have that big picture across the whole of the built environment. A really good example of that, that convening is uh, what, what we did collectively on the vision, the vision for the built environment, um, because we were able to bring people together from across the industry, uh, and wider actually, um, to develop and articulate a vision for the built environment. Uh, and I think that was uh, a very a, a very successful thing. The first time it's been done at that scale in the industry. And actually, I, I've got the numbers. It, it, it was groundbreaking. We had 75 industry leaders and over 40 different organisations working together and on, on this document and putting it out. It's been picked up internationally and it's in UK government policy already. So it, it's this collaborative working, it, it really does work. So some of the outputs that have come out of CDBB over the last four years um, are we're looking at building information modelling, uh, support for new, new UK standards and the international ISO standard, the UK BIM framework which helps UK firms actually use those standards on jobs, on projects, working groups like the Building Clients Group, the Home Nations Working Group that connect and collaborate and coordinate the use of digitalisation in the built environment in their individual communities and also skills and training help for people to upskill their workforce, not just on the technical, but on the social, the legal, the other pieces that make this digitalisation journey work. And of course, then there's the whole National Digital Twin Programme. On the National Digital Twin Programme side of things, uh, it, it was really taking uh, that programme from, from nothing to something uh, and implementing the recommendations of data of the public good. Uh, so I guess the starting point for that was the Digital Framework Task Group that oversees this and brings people together from across government and industry and academia. Um, but then also on the programme itself, um, developing the Digital Twin Hub, uh, which is hugely successful. The, the whole idea of bringing together the community of people who are interested in digital twins, both on the demand side and the supply side. Uh, so that now has more than 3,000 members, uh, more than 1,500 different organisations represented in it. Uh, so it's a really vibrant um, kind of meeting place for people uh, who are into digital twins. We started off with six asset owners and, and thinking we might get to 30 if we were lucky, but I fully remember sitting in a meeting where we clicked over to 3,000 individual members and realised that this was something that was really making a difference, that people were really engaged with and they wanted, they wanted to be actively involved. And that was, that was a great feeling. I, I, I do agree with that. It, it really was a great feeling. It, it felt like uh, people were on the journey with us. It wasn't just us kind of saying something all by ourselves but actually there's a there's a you know industry coming coming to and for me i think one of the early 
aha moments was probably coming uh, from the Gemini principles. Very early on in the National Digital Twin program, uh, we, we worked collaboratively uh, with, with industry to develop these Gemini principles, which are basically the conscience for the National Digital Twin. Uh, and we kind of realised very early on uh, that the National Digital Twin needs to be used ethically. So we, you know, we wanted to have it founded on, on strong, good principles. Um, but what we found, again, from quite early on, was that people responded very well to the Gemini principles. And not just in this country, but we started kind of getting reports back from um, uh, internationally uh, that actually those Gemini principles resonated. Uh, and so that, I think, gave me some early confidence that we were onto a good thing. So picking up on what Mark said, one of the exciting things for me was that it, it's, it's not just been UK focused. The interest out there is, is truly international. And we've been speaking with people from from Europe, from Australasia, from the States, from the Far East, from South America, and they're all at different stages of this journey, but all realizing quite how important it is. And that engagement and that sharing of knowledge, that exchange has been fascinating, um, but also has helped us move on yeah. as well as us helping others move on. It's been a collective journey. Absolutely. It feels like a shared journey and it's going to be bringing people together on that journey. Beyond that, there's the whole development of the information management framework, um, looking to find a way of connecting digital twins, you know, having a, a shared language so that digital twins can talk to each other. Uh, and that needs to be built on uh, a technical foundation. But what we've clearly found all the way through this is that it's not just about the technical side, it's very much about the social side as well. And Alexandra's already picked up on, on some of that. But uh, you know, ad addressing commercial, regulatory, legal, all, all sorts of, of things which are you know, very human. And then uh, we've also got the demonstrator, Credo, our climate resilience demonstrator, uh, which is making fantastic progress uh, and, and in a really tangible way uh, showing what the value is of having secure, resilient information flow across sector boundaries, basically to make better climate resilience decisions. And, and how relevant is that? Picking up on Credo, it's a brilliant example of what CDBB does and how it does it. So there's a really strong, fundamental, foundational, technical piece that comes out of it. It's something that people can pick up and use and make better climate decisions and have better climate resilience for their facilities. And it can be repeated multiple times, it's not just a one-off, which is fantastic. But it also produces um, communications and there's a video, for example, attached that shows everybody why this is really important, why we need to be tackling our climate resilience and how digital twins are part of that solution. So it's not just about the technical, it's about the social, about how it really impacts people's lives and makes life better for them in the future. It's incredible to think that back when we started up, it was just me and a colleague. Um, we didn't even have an office. And now, literally, there are thousands of people working in, on the Digital Build Britain agenda as part of the programme. And even wider, the people who use our materials and our outputs, I would say is tens of thousands. And just in four years, that's, that's almost incredible. It's been fantastic. I think that's right. I mean, it, we can see that the, the language has changed. I, mean, I, I can remember the, the meeting when I first started talking about digital twins, uh, and I was definitely the alien in the room from a completely different planet. Uh, but now that's everywhere. You know, it, it, it's common language. People are uh, you know, not just using language, but understanding what it means. Uh, and I think it really is clear that that's, um, you know, that's what CDBB um, has done. CDBB and all our friends. So the legacy that I hope we leave is is a better planet, a better society, a better economy. It's about being better ancestors for those that come after us. For me, uh, I, I think it, it goes to, to the vision uh, that, that, that we share uh, that is so motivating. Uh, and, and I think at the heart of that uh, is seeing that the built environment itself has purpose. And that purpose is all about enabling people and nature to flourish together for generations. Uh, and I, I think that that vision will remain. Uh, and that vision still uh, is worth striving for. Uh, I have to also say um, that uh, from a geeky point of view, uh, the, the, the technical part is quite exciting too. It is cool. Yeah. And I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who's been involved in the programme. The, your passion, your expertise, your enthusiasm has been what's made CDBB the great place to work and producing these great outputs. I um, can't wait to see 
what you're going to do in the future. Yeah, I'd just like to echo that. Massive thanks. Um, uh, but this is not the end of the journey. <laughs> yeah, the journey continues. Digitalisation in the built environment, yeah, we, we all believe in it. It's going to continue. Um, and it's, it is. It's going to be fascinating to see where it goes. <laughs>